Hello and welcome to another video from the technical team at River Meadow. In this demonstration, we will be focusing on time to execution of migrations leveraging River Meadow SaaS. Unlike other migration or disaster recovery tools on the market today, River Meadow was designed to be easy to implement and very lightweight in terms of requirements. This rapid approach to migrations allows River Meadow customers to be up and running and migrating using River Meadow in as little as 15 minutes. Unlike traditional DR tools that can be leveraged for migrations, River Meadow is a tool that was designed to solve a different problem, which is migration from anywhere to anywhere without having to deploy virtual infrastructure to the source data center. The common analogy that we use in discussions with partners and customers is that we are the moving company. We package up machines at the current source environment and move them to the target environment. We make this transition as frictionless as possible. Traditional DR tools are solving a different problem, which is continuous replication and initiating failovers to meet predetermined RTO requirements. These tools require extensive planning and implementation to both source and target environments, which is acceptable under the auspices of a DR solution, which is going to stay around for a long period of time. This solution paradigm is very heavy for the purposes of migration and isn't feasible in many situations that our cloud service providers face where access to source hypervisor isn't possible. The other issue with DR tools is they weren't designed with flexibility in mind. They replicate data from A to B without all of the customizations or transformational elements that customers are looking for in a migration project. They lack the ability to modernize operating systems or applications, as well as the ability to right-size workloads, both from a compute as well as a storage allocation perspective when they land in cloud. So let's take a look at the River Meadow setup requirements for different target cloud environments starting with public cloud. To get started with migrations going to Azure as a target, we deploy a virtual appliance into the desired Azure subscription. River Meadow needs an Azure app registration with a contributor role. Once the information is provided, River Meadow will automate the provisioning of the appliance. For migrations going to AWS as a target, we deploy a virtual appliance into the AWS account and desired VPC. River Meadow provides a CloudFormation template to automate the creation of the cross-account role and the Amazon resource name, or ARN, is provided to River Meadow to automate the provisioning of the appliance. For private clouds, such as vSphere and vCloud, or for public clouds including VMware on Azure, AVS, VMware on AWS, VMC, and soon to be announced VMware on Google, GVE, River Meadow supplies the appliance in OVF format. A secure token code is generated at appliance download and is inserted during the OVF deployment wizard to pair the appliance with the River Meadow SaaS platform. Once the appliance is deployed and powered on, it will make an outbound connection to the message bus. In all cases, outbound connectivity to the River Meadow platform is set to two static IP addresses over TCP port 443. This simplifies outbound whitelisting for deny all security policies. With appliances deployed and heart beating to the River Meadow platform, we're now ready to start migrations. Let's move over to a technical demo where I will deploy two appliances and start migrations on two workloads. I'm logged into the River Meadow SaaS portal as a first time user. I'm going to provision two virtual appliances, one to AWS and one to Azure. I'll go to Manage, Select Cloud Appliances, and then Add a Target Cloud Account. I'll start with AWS. I'll provide a name for the appliance and download the CloudFormation template to my local machine. Let's jump over to the AWS console and into CloudFormation. I'll create a new stack and upload the saved template from the previous step. I'll acknowledge the CF template is creating a cross-account role and policy and wait for the stack to build. Once the stack is built, we'll go to IAM and then to roles and get the role ARN. We'll copy and paste this back into River Meadow. I'll add an optional River Meadow tag that can be anything to help identify the target cloud instance and then click test connection. If River Meadow SaaS can communicate with the AWS public API and has access to the account, we'll be able to deploy the virtual appliance. We will select the region VPC and subnet where we want the appliance deployed to. This is where the migrated machines will reside from a region and VPC perspective. I'll add an AWS tag as an example, provide an instance name for the appliance, and then initiate the appliance deployment. As the previous appliance deploys to AWS, let's repeat the process for Azure. We'll supply a name for the appliance and copy and paste directory or tenant ID from Azure an application ID that comes from an enterprise app we created, along with a key value or secret key belonging to the enterprise app. We'll test the connection to ensure that we have the necessary access to the Azure subscription. We'll add a River Meta tag and continue with the process to deploy the appliance. We'll choose the target subscription, location, resource group, virtual network, and subnet we want the appliance deployed to. 
we'll provide a VM name and initiate the appliance deployment. We'll hop over to the AWS console and we'll see that the appliance is actually in provisioning state. We'll refresh the screen, we'll see that the status checks have passed, and we'll see that we'll have a heartbeat back in the River Meadow platform for this appliance, which means we're ready to proceed with migration. We can perform the same steps by logging into the Azure console and taking a look at the VM provisioning status for the appliance. Here we'll see that the VM is in creating status, and by refreshing it we'll see that the status is now shifted to running. We'll see that we also have a heartbeat for this appliance, which means we're also ready to proceed with migrations to Azure. It's important to note that we have now completed the entire setup process to multi-cloud, and we can now focus on running migrations. The elapsed time it took to get to this point was 10 minutes. We haven't had to deploy anything to the source environment to start migrating. Next, we'll focus the demo on migrating two workloads. We'll migrate a LAMPstack AWS and a .NET application to Azure. For the Windows workload, since we're running Windows Server 2008 R2 on the source, we'll also do an upgrade to the target clone to Windows Server 2016 as it lands in Azure to modernize the operating system and IIS versions during the actual migration. Before we add our sources and migrate, we can set up tagging policies at the project level for both AWS and Azure to provide consistency of tagging throughout migrations. For the purposes of this demo, I'll add myself as the owner for new instances and VMs migrate into AWS and Azure respectively. Next, we'll add our two sources we intend to migrate using our CSV import. The CSV contains source IPs, credentials, move group name, assigned resource name, target migration date, as well as target, instance, and VM sizing that would have come from third-party discovery tooling based on cloud right sizing assessments. The only required field is the source IP. The rest of the metadata is optional based on what is known about the migrations or not. Let's start the migration process for the Windows source moving to Azure. I'm picking a single machine here for the demo, but customers most often select and migrate the entire move group. We'll choose the target appliance leverage for the migration, in this case the appliance we deployed to Azure. We'll choose full migration and continue on with the migration profile once migration readiness checks complete. The migration profile serves as a blueprint for the new machine that we're migrating. Other demo videos that we have go into more details in terms of the options and features available within the profile. For this demo, I'm adding some placement options to land in Azure, as well as enabling in-place OS upgrade to the target clone to Windows Server 2016 and IAS 10. Once I've done this process, I'll submit the migration for execution. With that migration started, let's start another migration of the LAMP stack to AWS. This time I will choose the appliance we deployed to AWS and start another full migration. In the migration profile, I'll choose AWS specific placement options and start the migration. At this point, both migrations are off and running. We'll take a look in the Azure console to see the progress of our first migration. Here we can see that we're creating the VM. Similarly to AWS, we're creating the instance of our migrations. We'll go ahead and speed through some of the actual data copy so that we can get to the telemetry. With the migrations running, we can take a look at the live migration telemetry to get an understanding of time elapsed, time remaining, and transfer speed. These metrics can help in migration planning efforts for large-scale projects. For the Windows migration, we can look back at the migration summary as required to see additional details and information used to conduct the migration. You'll also notice with the Windows migration that we have a fourth migration step, which is where we do the Windows in-place OS upgrade. We'll speed up some additional data copy so that we can get to the end of a migration for the LAMP stack that we migrated to AWS. The migration in this case is completed after 15 minutes of runtime. An email was actually sent to let me know that this migration completed that contains full migration, the host name that it was migrated on, the target cloud we migrated to, along with target cloud related details like IP address, OS version, and instance sizing. Our recommendation is to always schedule bulk migrations to run off hours. River Meadow will send emails based on the migration outcome, allowing for next steps to be planned or executed in terms of syncs, UAT, or cutover. Now that we have a completed migration, let's take a look at a feature that we call the Migration Planner. The Migration Planner is a customizable UI interface to track migrations based on what River Meadow already knows of the migration, as well as allowing users to add additional metadata about the migration and related migration aspects moving towards the cutover. Additional columns can be added and sorted based on the user's need. In my example, I've added a column for updating AV, as well as a column for installing the Puppet Client as examples of additional tracking information that I can now provide. The data from the Migration Planner can be exported via CSV 
as needed to update external systems such as Planner or Power BI. Let's go and check back in on the Windows migration with in-place OS upgrade to Windows Server 2016 that's going to Azure. We'll speed this process up to completion. As with the LAMP migration to AWS, I've received an email to let me know the migration is completed. In this email, we can see that the target OS version has been updated as required. We are now at end of task and at the end of the demo. In this demo, we've shown how we can be up and running in a new environment in a matter of minutes. That by leveraging SaaS and automation, we haven't had to install any infrastructure into the source environment, nor have we had to install any software onto the source machine. We've migrated two workloads in parallel to two target clouds. We've modernized the Windows workload during the migration to help customers mitigate CSA costs and provide additional life to the application servers. We've looked at Migration Planner to help track migrations as they evolve leading to cutover. We've hoped that you enjoyed this video presentation and please reach out to us to see how we can help you with your transformation efforts. Thank you again for your time.